In this video, I'm going to try and give you my honest review of what it's like to be an EV owner. I've been driving my electric car coming up three years and I've covered just over 25,000 miles and I wanna give you both the good and the bad. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I want you guys to know my exact experience so you can use that to make your own decision as to whether an electric vehicle would be a good fit for you or not. I'm not gonna try and push you either direction. I have no skin in this game. I just wanna tell you my honest experience. So I've got five things I wanna run through. And number one is the absolute worst part about being an EV owner in the UK, and that is the public charging network. The public charging network has a number of different issues. I would say the biggest one is reliability. I've lost count the number of times over the past few years I've gone to a public charger and the charger's either been broken, um, the charger's been blocked by maybe another EV owner whose port is in a strange place so they've had to park at a weird angle, or even blocked by people who drive normal petrol cars who have just parked in the space anywhere. So they are very unreliable from that perspective, but definitely just from just not working in the first place is the biggest issue. Uh, number two, the public charging network is massively fragmented. It's a bit like these new car parks where you have to download the app to pay for the car park. That's what it's like with the majority of public chargers. You have to download a different app and there are so many different providers. I've probably got 10 to 15 different apps on my phone for different providers. Now there are the occasional public chargers that allow you to just pay with contactless payment and hopefully that's where we're all gonna go eventually. But definitely, this is the worst part about being an EV owner. You, This is the experience that many people will have. They would have done their research first. They do, they've planned a long journey. Maybe they're doing two, 300 miles, and they're going to stop halfway for a quick charge while they have a coffee. And they get to the charge that they plan to charge on. It's a brand they haven't heard of. Maybe they've already pre-downloaded the app, but if not, they'll download the app on the day. They then take another five minutes putting in all of their details, and then they plug it in, and fingers crossed it will charge, and then often it doesn't charge at first attempt. And this is the same every time you go to a different provider. So it's really, really fragmented. And until we get to the point where all public chargers either have a universal um, card that we can all use or we can just rely on contactless payments, it's gonna be a frustrating experience. And also the government needs to implement some sort of legislation on these public chargers to ensure that they are held to provide a certain level of reliability. There's no good these chargers being out of action for days, weeks, or sometimes even months at a time. And the other issue with public charging as well, it is a lot more expensive than using your home charger. So if you're charging in public at the moment, you could be paying 50, 60, 70p per kilowatt hour versus charging at home less than 10p. That is a huge markup. So with that said, that is the worst part about being an EV owner. Now on the same topic of charging, you've got home charging, which is one of the best things about being an EV owner. It is so convenient, I get home each day, I get out of the car, in 10 seconds I've plugged my car in, and then the next day I pull away on 100% battery. I don't have to go to a petrol station, and provided I'm not doing a journey of greater than probably 250 miles, I don't have to go to a public charger either. So home charging is great. And the cost of home charging as well is super cheap, but I'm gonna come back to that later in the video when we go through the cost of being an EV owner. So public charging is terrible, and really that is what the thumbnail of this video is based on. If you're gonna buy an electric vehicle but have to rely on the UK public charging network, I would say do not buy an EV because it's just gonna drive you mad. The only time I would potentially consider it if you can't charge at home is one, is if you can charge at work and your work's got a reliable charger. Or two, you'd need to consider Teslas because the supercharger network is superior to the rest of the other providers. So that's charging covered. Now, following off from that, we have range anxiety. I've got a list here if you wonder why I keep looking down. So range anxiety is something you've probably already read about. Now I've got to be honest, in the three years that I've been driving this EV, I think I've had range anxiety twice. Once when I first got the car and was worried about having it, but it never actually happened. And then the second time was last year, I was doing a journey which required a charging stop and I planned to stop at Cambridge Services. And I got there with about 15% left. And the charger that I went to was broken and there was two different charging stations at Cambridge. So I went to the other bank of chargers and there was a huge queue. So I didn't really want to queue in that because an EV charger queue normally takes a long time to go through. So I got a bit of range anxiety that I'd kind of got there at 15% and 
Um, but I just looked on Zap Maps and saw that there was another one at Peterborough, so 10 minutes up the motorway, I was able to plug in straight away. So I would say the best way, to, there's two things to do with range anxiety. One, don't buy a car with a small battery. So the car I've got is a Polestar 2, and this has, I think it's about a 78 kilowatt hour battery. So in the summer months, we'll get about 250 miles, maybe a bit more, and in the winter months, around about 200. And this is something to keep in mind as well with EVs. Your range will vary based on the weather, but it's only really the extreme cold. So when you're getting down towards zero degrees, that's when the range really drops off. But yeah, I would say in the winter, I average around 200 miles per tank, or say per tank, per full charge, and in the summer, about 250. Now, if you go and buy a car that's got a kind of a 40 kilowatt hour battery or less, You've maybe got a range of anything from 150 to anything down to maybe 100, 120 in the winter to maybe 150, 180 in the summer. So those are the cars that I would personally stay away from. I would say if you're considering an EV at the moment, I would get one with a minimum battery size of close to 60 kilowatt hours, which is becoming the norm for a lot of the more popular EVs that are out there. And the other thing you can do is just make sure you plan your long journey. So for the most part, being an EV owner, the majority of people don't have to charge every day because they're not doing long journeys. They're just doing 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 mile journeys, even to work and back. They won't have to charge on a public charger. But for that maybe 1% use case per year when you're going on a holiday across the country or you have to go to a meeting somewhere and you do have to charge, you can manage the range anxiety just by doing a bit of planning. So I know if I've got to do 300 miles, I'll maybe plan to stop when I've got 30, 40% left. So if I get there and the charger's not working, I've got plenty to go on and find another charger. But also I plan a backup charger as well. So I know whenever I've got a long journey, I have two chargers in mind. So if the first one's busy or broken, I can go to the second one. And also I only go to fast chargers that are a minimum of 50 kilowatts plus. So on apps like ZapMap, you can filter the chargers with the minimum speed. So I don't go to any of the slow chargers, so 50 kilowatt hours minimum. And I also only plan to go to chargers where there are normally at least three or four charging points. I don't like going to chargers where there's only one or two because if one's out of order or one's being used, then there's normally a long wait. So go to chargers that have multiple chargers available and also have a backup plan as well. So with a decent battery and planning, you shouldn't have any issues with range anxiety. You'll never have to go to a petrol station again. You can leave your house every morning with 100% charge and depending on your car, hopefully at least 200 miles of range. So again, this is something I see a lot of people get hung up on. They get hung up on the 1% use case scenario. Whenever I say to anyone they've got an EV, they're like, oh, what if you want to drive to Scotland? I'm like, when was the last time you drove to Scotland? So I try to use more of a real world example. Maybe you're driving to Devon or you're driving to Wales and you've got a four or five hour journey. You're not, very few people are going to drive five hours straight. Everyone's going to have a toilet break at some point anyway. So I don't see it being an issue just planning to stop for 20 to 30 minutes or maybe 40 minutes, depending on the size of the battery and how much charge you want. I don't see that being a major issue. You're going to stop for a toilet break. You're going to stop for maybe a bit of lunch as well. And most of the time I've found by doing that, it doesn't really inconvenience me at all. So with a bit of planning and thinking about your Day-to-day -day usage, EVs are a better choice for most people, but if you do have a job which means traveling a lot around the country, then maybe EVs aren't necessarily the best choice. And like I say, unless you're considering a Tesla and you've got the supercharger network to use, but again, the costs are gonna go up compared to charging at home, whichever way you look at things. Now on the subject of costs, there are four things we need to discuss. You have one, which is the actual purchase of the vehicle. You can say purchase, but the majority of us are leasing them or buying them on finance. And yes, EVs have been more expensive for the past few years. That gap is narrowing all the time. And often at the moment, the additional expense for the EV can be offset by the savings you make on fuel. So try not to compare the headline figures that the EV equivalent is 10 or 20 grand more because often when you put them over finance and you include the potential fuel saving, they are much more comparable. And also the electric cars seem to be better spec'd out. They usually have better trim levels. Uh, for example, the Polestar 2, this isn't a cheap car. I think the, the list price of this when I got this a few years ago was about 50,000 pound, but I took it on a business lease and there's lots of tax savings you can use when you put an EV through the business. So it didn't actually work out as expensive as you think a 50,000 pound car would. So keep that in mind when you're doing your maths. It's not all about the headline figure. 
it's about what you're going to be paying over finance and potentially how much you can save on fuel as well. So that is the cost of the car. But new EVs are depreciating massively at the moment. So I would not buy an EV. Definitely, I would not buy a brand new EV at the moment as depreciation for EVs is terrible and it is worse than the petrol or diesel equivalent. So I wouldn't buy an EV, I would lease or finance one, especially if you can put it through the business or get it as a company car as the benefit in kind tax on those are very, very low. The next thing you have is maintenance and servicing, which is gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but because there's a lot less for them to service when you take it in, often it's cheaper. Now with the Polestar I got, I think they included servicing, it was free for the first four years, and literally when I took it in, they walked around the car, maybe topped up the washer fluids. They didn't do very much at all, they don't have to change the oil or anything like that. So servicing is usually cheaper on an EV as there are less things to go wrong in theory at least anyway. And then the final thing from a cost perspective is the obvious one which is charging. So you've probably seen a lot of articles in newspapers that are, I don't know, they're intent on creating this divide and hate between EV drivers and non-EV drivers. I don't get it, I don't think it's necessary. I enjoy both types of cars. But I've seen lots of stories saying that EVs are now more expensive to run than their petrol or diesel equivalent, and it's just not true. Like if, if you base it purely on public charging costs, yeah, you could probably make the case if you're charging at 70 kilowatts an hour, that a car like this might cost me 50 to 60 quid to charge up fully from zero to 100% on a public charger. The truth is, 99% of the time, most EV drivers are gonna be charging at home. And for me to charge this car off peak overnight cost me less than 10 pound. So that's paying about 9p per kilowatt hour. So it's less than 10 pound to get somewhere between 200 to 250 miles of range. So when you see these articles that are there to generate clicks and generate hate and division, look into the details that often comparing the public cost when the majority of the time you, you will be charging at home. Whereas when you do charge in public, yes, it is more expensive. You are paying 50, 60, 70 P per kilowatt hour, but often you aren't charging from naught to 100%. You're charging maybe from 20% to 80% or 30% to 80%. So you're not necessarily putting in a full tank, so to speak. It might cost you 20, 30 quid rather than 50, 60 quid. So don't get caught up in what is going on in the mainstream media at the moment, which is this big drive against EVs. Just because the government wants us to go EVs doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, all right? So the next thing I wanna take a look at is driving experience. And this is another argument that I see for petrol cars is that EVs aren't as fun. And again, this comes down to use case. Now, the very small minority of people, including myself, who enjoy driving their cars fast. And I, I, I've had hot hatches since I was, I don't know, early 20s. I've had uh, my car before this. I had a Golf R Estate, a Cooper Estate, um, an Astra VXR, a Renault Megane 250 Cup, a Clio 182. So I've always enjoyed driving hot hatches. So going from them to the Polestar, which is a fast EV, 0-60 in this is just over four seconds. I think it's got the equivalent of like 400 horsepower. So it is a rapid car. But yeah, you don't get the noise you get with a petrol engine when you're working through the gears. And obviously with it being an EV, you don't have gears. It's just full auto, you've got two pedals. I do get the argument that the driving experience isn't maybe as quite as raw as it would be in the type of cars that are designed to do that. But again, for the majority of people, especially the older generation that are kind of quite happy just going from A to B and aren't really worried about the experience of getting their EVs are actually much more enjoyable. They're much more, they're much more pleasurable for the passengers because you haven't got any gear changes. The power delivery can be as smooth as you want it to be. I would say they are safer cars as you have a lot more power usually than the equivalent petrol because so that makes overtaking a lot easier and just all round they are a very very nice place to be and a good example is my wife um she was dead set against getting an electric vehicle because she is happy with using gears and she was worried about going to two pedals and all of that and two months ago she got an ev and it's now her favorite car that she's ever had and she does not like driving but she said to me the other day she feels happier in it. She can concentrate more at junctions as you can not worry about what's going on with gears or anything like that. She can focus more on the driving and it makes overtaking safer. So we live in the country, so we often have to overtake. She says she feels much more comfortable now overtaking in an EV. So you have to think about your use case. If you're looking to live, you know, you want that raw feeling, you're not going to get that from an EV just yet. 
Now, there are some EV hot hatches coming through and some very, very fast EV cars out there. There's no doubt about it. Like The Polestar is one of the quickest cars on the road. Most of the Teslas are the quickest cars that are on the road. So the EVs are very, very fast. Um, and even two weeks ago, I test drove the new MG4 X Power, which is basically a hot hatch. And they strapped on it um, two motors and the overall power is about 430 horsepower in hatchback. It was ridiculously quick. And it was, you know, it was a good laugh to drive. So it depends what you want from the car. Like, I would happily switch to that car, no, no worries. And I would happily go back to a petrol car if, if the option come up. Which brings me on to my final point, which is, would I get another EV? And the honest answer for me and my use case, yes, I would. If I had to rely on the public charging network, no, I definitely wouldn't. But in my case, with the sort of cars I like to drive and all of the additional trim levels that normally come with an EV as standard, despite the fact they're more expensive list price, it's actually cheaper for me to get an EV through my business than it is to buy a comparable uh, petrol driven car. So for me, I definitely have an EV again, but they certainly aren't for everyone. You have to think about how you would use the car. If you're doing journeys of less than 200 miles on a regular basis, and you'll be able to charge at home at all times, they are a very, very good choice. If you're driving across the country on a weekly basis, then maybe they won't be the best choice. And if you have to rely on the public charging network, as I said at the start of the video, do not buy an EV. Now, if you're like me and have your own business and you want to put an EV through your business and are interested in how much you can save on tax, I'm going to pop up a video now which talks you through the full breakdown of putting an EV through your business.